Welcome to Phil Talks Tech. Today I'm going to be fitting a direct drive extruder to my Ender 3 V2. We've got all my bits laid out here. I've got the printer running. I'm just putting a calibration cube on the Bowden tube to um, do a comparison when the direct drive is fitted. To get started with, I just want to talk a, bit, a little bit about the hot end. If um, you're running the standard Creality hot end, you really should be running this um, Luke Hatfield uh, hot end mod. It's really simple. Rather than the, the Bowden tube going all the way down to the nozzle, we have a short piece of T PTFE tube that sits down and, and, and touches on the no in the nozzle, down inside here. And then we have a, a washer with a little tapered entry on it, it goes down inside. And what that does, it makes that bit of Bowden tube there captive. It puts tension on both sides of that bit of PTF tube so that tube is held solid and can't move. Some of the problems people have with Bowden tube is in slipping in the fitting up here. This doesn't allow it to move in the hot end. Yeah, this mod's a great idea. I'll put a link into the description to it. Um, and as you can see, the nozzle, the tube's inside the, the, the heat brake, and we have the coupler screw at the top, and it's captive. Now I'm not running that because I'm running an all metal hot end, so, um, but I thought I'd show you that. If you... To start with, I've 3D printed a um, mount for the direct drive. Uh, I'll show you where that fits when we're, when we're ready to assemble it. I actually have another extruder uh, stepper motor I'm going to use. Um, I've, I've got a spare, so I'll, I'll keep that one on there and show you, show you this as we go. I have the aluminium extruder to, to go on top of the stepper motor. I have a fang fan duct I'm going to use and I'll use the hot end out of there when this is finished printing. So we might start to assemble this now, just as that finishes printing, and then I can put it together. The step motor onto the bracket, extruder, oh hang on, we better make sure we put the extruder the, the right way, haven't we? Yep, it's gonna go this way. And a trusty little screwdriver. I'll put another link in the description to this, because everybody, every time I make a video and they see this screwdriver, they ask about it. Now we'll put the arm on, spring. You'll notice I've cut a piece of PTFE here, tubing to length to go between the extruder and the hot end. Okay, I'm just gonna show you how to measure your PTFE tube between your hot end and your extruder. So my hot end here ready to go. All you really need to do to start with, insert your, your burden tube all the way until it touches the nozzle, all the way home. And I keep a mark, I, I just put a fingernail there. Pull it back out and measure it. I got 46.64 millimeters. Okay, so I'll write that down. 46.64. Same sort of thing again. We um, insert the PTF each of in the extruder, and I oh, same again. I'll just measure how long that is, and that's 24.16. Depending on the extruder you get, I have a three millimeter gap between my, ex my extruder coupling and my hot end coupling. So I have to add three millimeters there. So the total there, I add all those up, 73.8 millimeters. So I need to cut a piece of PTFE tube, 73.8 millimeters. And there's a piece 73.8, nickel. And all you need to do is cut your PTF tube, T tube on the line. I received this cutter with the um, the Bowden tube when I bought it, the PTFE tube. These tools are really handy because they cut at 90 degrees. No troubles with angles on the end of your tube. And that's all you need. Well, that calibration tube's done. We'll switch it off and uh, get started on the pull down and refit. So one thing I've done is fitted sockets to my fans, just to make it easier to pull them off and on. Undo this one. Okay, oh, while we're still hot, I'll pull it. Just poke that little hole so we don't tangle our filament up. And we can just undo the hot end. Pull the bone tube. Just gonna move the Z-axis up so I can have a bit more room to work. So tight. Yeah, I'll put a new coupling on here. This is stuck in on the tube. They don't last forever. 
There we go, you can see the groove it's put in the tube. It really does grip it tight, but it makes it hard to get undone. Just change the fan over to the new duct. I'm not happy with the print quality of the duct I've printed, so I'm gonna, I will do another one when I get this all set up. A bit of plastic stuck in this duct. Joys of printing. Yeah, I've printed this in PETG for better temperature resistance for the hot end, but it's um, not happy with the print. I've got to dial in the PETG settings a bit more. I'll do that this week once I get this direct drive all sorted. What other things have uh, you been playing with? Because of the direct drive, I'm going to mount the spool on the front in the centre rather than the side. Just it's easier to feed into the top of the direct drive. Just going to remove these two rollers because the actual direct drive sits on top of that. I'm trying to get better time lapses and uh, I've been moving my camera around a bit to try it. I just had a thought today that I might actually move it to the opposite side of the printer away from the CR touch. Got to fit these little spaces in the 3D printer direct drive mount. Then it's all got to go back on here. Get our wheels. Yeah, nuts. And back on. Well, I'll take our belt. Our oh, belt's come back this side, that's all right. Come on, that back. Snip them up. Just adjust our eccentric. See, so we've got a bit of play in the rod there. We'll just adjust this up till it's nice and tight and no. Not over tight. Just fit my belt back on. Just release the tension. Belt's back on. Tighten the belt up, put a bit of tension on it, and we'll check all them again later. Okay. Make sure we've got good movement, nice and free. Right, now we've got to fit all this back together. Bit fiddly getting all this in, but it's not too bad. Get the hot end mounted first. It's got it. It's all lined up there. Okay, just got to fit this coupling back in. Bit awkward in there, but just couldn't clear that roller properly before. PTFE tube back up in there. Pull the hot end up. And I'll take that rub off. I'll put that back on. In a okay, hot end's back on. Yeah, so it can sock before we get it all hot again. Plug our sour touch back in. Now, cool, parts cooling fan. Let's fit the heatsink fan. Just it's going to unplug the old extruder. Plug it into this extruder extension cable I've got here, and plug this direct drive extruder in. Nice little um, tie point in the 3D, 3D printer part, so that's nice. All done. I haven't removed this extruder. I'm going to leave it there for now because I've got a spare. If I want to do some more comparisons between direct drive and Bowden, I can just plug the extruder and whack a Bowden tube back on it and try it. Okay, so I'll fit some filament back on it and um, warm it up and print a calibration cube with the direct drive and see how it comes up. On. Take all my dirty fingerprints off the plate. Just some 90% isopropyl alcohol to clean the bed down. This is just a couple of 100 millimeter blocks I've printed. Exactly 100 millimeters because that suits my gantry height. And I'll just go over the printer and show you how I use them. After I've done any major work or move my printer, I like to check my, my X gantry. That's why I printed these blocks, the exactly 100 millimeters, and so I can bring the gantry down onto them, check that it's square. Just bring it down a bit at a time. I'll still have a bit of clearance there so I can come down. Nice clearance there. 
Just starting to rub on the Z now. It's good, nice, even there. Yep, gantry is good, parallel to the bed. Okay, now we've got the direct drive installed, we need to calibrate our E-steps for the extruder. We'll do that now. First of all, you want to prepare and you want to preheat, I'm using PLA, so I'll preheat for PLA because you'll need your no nozzle hot up to temperature to melt your PLA. Okay, I'm up to temperature. What I need to do is go to my move menu, go to extruder and extrude 100 millimeters of filament. Right, but before I hit, hit the button to go, I'm gonna mark this at exactly 100 millimeters using my 100 millimeter rod. Okay, so the bottom of that line is 100 millimeters. Hit extrude 100 millimeters and let's see how much we, we extrude. So I'm about a millimetre short, so I'll have to adjust the E-steps up a little. It should be easy enough. We'll see what we go now. I'll get rid of that. I don't jam the nozzle. And we'll go back, back to control, motion, steps a millimetre, and we want extruder. Okay, so we've got 97.3 and I need another, about a millimetre. So I'm going to go 98.3. All right, we'll see how that's, that goes. We'll store those settings so we don't lose them. Back, I'm going to move, move menu, extruder, and we'll crank that to 100 again. 100, I'll take my measuring rod and go with another exact 100 millimeters, and we'll extrude that. That is so close, it's hardly worth measuring. I think I'll stick at that, do a few prints. I can always tick up the E-steps if I need to. I'm just going to print a, a calibration cube with the direct drive now. I've just um, just created a direct drive file. The only thing I've changed over the last cube I did was the retraction settings. Just because it's direct drive, I've dropped them right back. I'll see how this prints and do a retraction test later. Pretty happy how that's going down. A little bit stringy this filament, but uh, to bump that temperature down a little bit I think. It's a little bit hot for this one. Well, I'm quite happy with that. Near identical cubes, really. A little bit of banding there, but no worse than the other one. Probably got some tuning to do on the printer since I've moved it all around, but that's all right. We'll get that sorted. Thanks for joining us today. If you like what you saw, why don't you like and subscribe? If there's any other things you'd like to see me do, let me know in the comments. I'm Phil, and this is Phil Talks Tech.